Hi everyone. So in this video, what I'm going to be covering is the EE marking criteria. I'm going to sort of deconstruct each part of it and examine how that can be applied to a mathematics EE. So the overall marking criteria has five sections. We have focus and method, which is worth six marks, knowledge understanding, which is six marks, critical thinking, which is 12, presentation, which is four, and engagement, which is six. So that is a 34 mark total. Now criterion A to D will be coming mostly from the essay and criterion E will mostly be coming from those reflections. So let's first of all talk about criterion A, focus and methods. So that's worth six marks. So one thing that's very important is the research question. Now the title and research question should clearly describe the topic of the essay and include the mathematical techniques that will be used. Because if we do not have a good research question and a good title, then we will actually be penalized because there's no focus. Graph theory, that is very vague. There's no focus for that. So if we have a very specific title, that is what they want, a specific title and a specific research question. Now it also says that we need to include the mathematical techniques. So if I said I wanted to optimize the route from one city to the other, that does not include the technique. So I would say optimizing the route from one city to the other using graph theory. That is including the mathematical technique. That is very important. So that would be a title because there was no question there. But if I wanted to make it a research question, I would say, how um, is it possible to optimally model the best route from one city to the other using graph theory? That would be a much more focused in your title page, a research question and a title. So both of those should be specific and they should describe your topic and your aim and it should include the mathematical techniques that we will be using. Please keep all that in mind. Those are all necessary to get those good focus and method marks. Now, what's also important is that you gotta set out all your working and ideas in sequential form. You can't just have all your working all over the shop. That will not make sense for the marker and it'll be difficult to decipher. You need to make sure everything logically flows down the page. Now, what's also important is that each section should build on or connect to the previous section. That way it's not fragmented. You know, if you have one bit of maths here and then you kind of ignore it for a bit, then have another section here, and then another section here, it's going to be very hard to keep track of everything and to remember what you did previously. But if everything logically builds upon itself, then that is what they generally speaking want. Or at least make sure it's obvious that it connects just in some way, shape or form. So if you can do that and make it very clear why you're doing one thing versus the other, that is what will generally help you with your focus and method marks. And that's why I think it's very important to lay out that plan at the start of your intro to sort of make it very clear what you are doing and why. Now, each of the things listed here should contribute to the research question. Diagrams, tables, figures, sources cited, equations and working out, written explanations. Everything listed there should in some way, shape or form contribute to that research question. If they do not, they should not be in your essay. Everything you do in your essay should in some way help contribute to answering that research question and contributing to that topic that you are discussing. Now, what's also important is that your thing, essay must be easy to follow and logical in structure. Now, it should be easy to follow with someone with a mathematical aptitude. So if you are a maths HL teacher, and that's all you know, that should be easy for you to follow. So if you're doing stuff outside the HL syllabus, you need to make sure you really well explain that so that a teacher that is not familiar with that is able to read and understand that topic. So you need to make it easy to follow and logical in structure. Now also it's very important for these focus marks, you need to be within the 4,000 word limit. If you're not, you will lose marks straight away in focus and method because it'll be considered unfocused that you couldn't keep everything within the word count. Now generally speaking for maths, there is actually a bit of leeway. You can be a decent amount under the word limit because the equations don't count. So just bear that in mind. You don't have to reach 4,000 words exactly to get the full marks for this. You just can't be over. Now what's also important is knowledge and understanding. So you need to demonstrate an understanding of all the maths that you are using. So you need to explain all the key elements, you need to show all the steps in your working out, and you need to cite where appropriate. Because if you are just dragging ideas from other websites, that is not showing understanding. You even if you are dragging ideas from other literature, if you cite the source and then explain it using your own words and use it in a unique way, that is considered actually showing understanding. So what's also important is that you need to provide accurate 
and complete explanations of all the terminology that is being used. To give a definition, something that makes it very clear that you understand what terminology, what everything means, and making it very clear for the marker that you know what it means so they can also understand it. Now, you also need to make knowledgeable comments on the source material. So that means if you get things from other sources, if you get a formula from another textbook, you need to make it very clear that you understand what that formula means or where it's from or how it's a reputable source. If you can explain that properly, then that would be considered fine. Or like, you know, if you're getting a statistical one, you need to talk about the process that they used to acquire that stats in the first place. That way you can comment on its reliability, all those kind of things. You also need to define all variables, equations, and polynomials. If you don't do that, that you are not demonstrating your understanding properly to the marker, they might think you are just pulling these letters out of thin air. If you can explain what all the letters mean, all the equations and all that, that is what they want. Also, what's important is that if you cannot prove a theorem that you've given, you need to provide a clear example that explains it. So if there was a really complicated idea, a complicated theorem, you need to just give an example saying, for example, if I had this would happen versus if I had this, this other thing would happen. If you can explain that, that is fine. Otherwise, where possible, prove all theorems that are not part of your mathematical syllabus. I think that is quite important. Now, this is also something that will be inherent throughout your whole extended essay, hopefully, but you need to consistently show you know what you are doing. And that's through all the steps I've talked about before, all the working out, all the definitions, all those kind of things. Now, what's also important is that you may need to do a lot of wider reading to garner understanding of concepts. You might actually end up having to reference some things, some things you just need to develop a foundational understanding for yourself, and that way you can practically apply it later on. So you may need to do a lot of reading to really understand certain concepts, and then you can sort of figure out how to apply them properly in your extended essay. So if you can understand it properly, that is the first step to actually being able to communicate that you understand it to the marker and get these knowledge and understanding marks. Now, what's the biggest criteria is criterion C, which is critical thinking. So you need to demonstrate your abilities having correct deductive reasoning and arguments. If you have correct reasoning and correct arguments and it's clearly your own work, that will help out in the critical thinking marks because it's clear that you're not just taking stuff from other textbooks and just doing what they've done and maybe changing the numbers. That isn't critical thinking because you are not doing anything new with it. So if you are getting ideas and sort of testing them out and applying them in different situations, that is much more critical thinking. That'll get you better marks. Where possible, also try to establish hypotheses and ideas. Try to say, okay, I'll test this idea with this here, or maybe I'll make a model and I'm testing it out, or I have hypothesized that this statistical analysis will result in this. All those kind of things are really good because it means you have like an aim, you set out to try to do something, and you predict how it'll be, and then you get to see how it actually turned out. Maybe it didn't turn out that way, and then you can explain why it did or did not turn out the way you thought it did. All those kind of things are quite important. What's also important is trying to formulate mathematical models if possible. That is usually generally a thing that they are looking for in maths IAs because it requires a lot of practical thinking and a lot of theoretical thinking. So if you can formulate certain models and test out their applicability, that is generally speaking what they will quite like for critical thinking marks. Now, also very important, similar to the previous knowledge criteria, show all you're working out. Very important, show all the necessary working out. So if you, once again, similar to IA, if you're doing repetitive stuff, you can put the repetitions in the appendix, but it's the first time you're doing certain working out, make sure you include it and show all the steps and show all the important parts. Now, if you're taking steps from other websites, you need to cite that you got that idea from someone else. If you were doing things and you completely think of it of yourself, go ahead, that's completely fine, write out all your working. But if you're getting some ideas from other people, that's fine, you just need to reference it to make it clear that that was not your own work. What you also should be trying to do is provide conjectures that can be readily proven. So what that means is you want to sort of create ideas and then other people can try to scrutinize it. They can test it out and see whether it's true or not. So, you know, you could test out your model. You might have created a model for, I don't know, the spread of COVID. I probably wouldn't personally suggest that idea because I feel like a lot of people would do it and you wouldn't get that many marks of personal engagement, likely. But let's just say, hypothetically, I did that. Someone else could readily prove or disprove what I'm saying by just testing out the applicability of the model, all those kind of things. If you can create something that can be readily proven or disproven by someone else, that is generally speaking what they're after because that makes it easy to quantify the level of success you've had in your EE. And what should also be important is that your discussion and evaluation of your results should be concise. It should be, it should still be there, very important, and it should have a good amount of rigor and detail, 
but nothing more than necessary. So you want to be concise, straight to the point. You want to talk about your strengths, weaknesses, and areas of further investigation without any fluff in there. So, you know, for your weaknesses, if you want to talk about certain variables, go straight to the point. Say, I, we did not account for X, Y, Z variables. We didn't think about these kind of things. That could be future avenue of investigation, or, you know, we could say we assumed these kind of things, which may not be true in real life. All those kind of things would be very good as long as you're concise and you generally scrutinize valuable aspects of your EE. Those are all things they're looking for for your critical thinking criteria. So the conclusion is actually quite important to get marks in this criteria as well as the body and intro. Now, presentation. This is generally required in terms of a maths EE. This is in terms of quite a few things. For starters, it has to be presented in a format equivalent to an academic paper. What that means is it should be laid out very logically. It should have written explanation, some maths, more written explanation, maths, etc. As long as everything in the maths is being explained within your explanations properly and it's being adequately referenced. So you, if you may remember, I've said this in a few videos now, you need to make sure you number and caption all your figures and diagrams and your equations. And that way you can properly refer back to everything. So. What's also important is to use proper equation symbols, layout, and formatting. And that can be achieved using proper formatting software. So that could be using the LaTeX or Microsoft Word Equation Mode, any of those things, as long as it's proper, correct use of symbols and mathematical notation, that is generally speaking what they're going to be after. Now also in the presentation marks, the referencing will be part of that. And that means the appropriate use of referencing. So you should be using either in text, end note, or footnotes. If you, you can choose either one of those three, it's entirely up to you, but if you choose one, you have to be consistent with it and it needs to be done properly. Now also you should be providing subheadings and headings. So headings should be title page, contents, intro, body, conclusion, references, appendix. Then subheadings can be different parts and you could put subheadings within the intro. You could have like, you know, your background first and then you could have your rationale, then your research question, all those kind of things. And your body, you can have subheadings. As long as it's very consistent formatting and it's very clear how each part is like a sub part of another, that's all completely fine as long as you, it is included properly. Now, what's also important is that you need to include concise, elegant mathematics supported by appropriate figures and proofs. So as I was saying, if you're introducing new formulas, you need to include either a proof or an example to explain that theorem. Otherwise, it does, there's no proper explanation about why that's there. So what they also mean by concise and elegant is that they don't want you to do needless math that doesn't actually contribute to anything. So, you know, it's canceling out stuff where possible, not doing ridiculous expansions for no reason, all those kind of things. If you can achieve those kind of things, that is generally speaking what they're looking for. Now also, um, it was stated here, you do not need to reach the 4,000 word limit. That was sort of what I was saying before, because the equations and all that don't count to your word count. And what's also important is that if you have an essay that is too long, you will actually get penalized for that. So please watch out for that. Now, what's also important is that when you have diagrams and text, diagrams and figures and all that and tables, the text explaining it should be relatively close to it. That way, you know, when a marker is reading it, they can just quickly look to the figure and go, oh, yep. And then there's the explanation there right next to it. So generally speaking, be very careful where you're putting all your figures. Don't like make a whole separate page at the back, at the end of the essay, all the figures, don't do anything like that. Try to put all your figures, all the important ones that you're referring to in your actual essay, close proximity to the writing so that it's clear that they can look back and see everything. Now, smaller data tables, that can be included in the body. That's completely fine. However, larger ones should be included in the appendix. And then summaries of that larger data set, that should be included in the actual body. And that should be include things like mean, standard deviation, interquartile range, all those kind of things, potentially, whatever may be necessary to your, for your EE. So larger tables should be put in the appendix, but you should also reference that appendix in the actual essay, say, see appendix A for the full data set, something like that. All those kind of things, that's just very important to keep in mind. Small data sets though, completely fine to put in the body. Now, also when you're doing bibliography formatting, that will be marked. So as long as you have a consistent established style, so it could be Harvard, APA, MLA, anything you want really, as long as you're consistent and you make sure that bibliography is in alphabetical order. Now, finally, we have the personal engagement marking criteria. So this is mostly based off the three reflections, but the EE itself 
and a thing called supervisor comments will be used as context. So your supervisor will write a few comments about you and they'll, they might reflect on how your progress was, how you were as a student, what you've been doing in the process for writing your EA, all those kind of things. They will generally speaking be written up by the supervisor for the marker to see. And the marker will read that along with all your, your actual EA and your reflections and sort of base their personal engagement marks from that. So what they want is they want evidence of reconsidering ideas when things weren't going well. They want to see that you thought about your idea and went, hang on, this isn't great because it's too complicated or it's too straightforward. I'm going to change my idea. I'm going to change my topic or I'm going to change my research question or my approach or my techniques, anything like that. As long as you're showing evidence of that is what they're going to be looking for. They also want you to show consideration of the successes in your approaches and techniques that you've chosen. So they want you to think about how good was your technique? How good was your idea and your approach? Were there certain issues? Were there, was it really solid? Did you not account for certain things? Did you assume too many things? If you show evidence of considering these things about how successful it was, that is generally speaking what they will be looking for. Now also what they want is they want you to explain why certain decisions were made. So, you know, if I decided to change my topic completely, I need to explain why I did that. I can't just say I changed topic. So if I explain that very well in the reflections, that will generally speaking help me with my personal engagement marks because I am showing that I'm genuinely considering everything and I've decided to make a big judgment call and I can provide a good explanation about why I have done that. What you also should show is that you have demonstrated that you've learned something new and you've actually provided something to the world that is substantial. If you can show that through your reflections, talk about how you introduced a new model or you've tested out something new, or you have applied a whole new area of mathematics in something that you haven't done before. All of those kind of things, if you can show evidence of that throughout your reflections, that is another thing they are very much looking for. Now also what they want is critical and reflective thinking. And this means that you need to reflect on both the good and the bad aspects of your essay writing process. Within your three reflections, this is where you sort of talk about what went wrong, what went well, and how did you get around the stuff that did go wrong. All those kind of things are very much what they want you to think about. They don't want you to just say, I did the best job, my essay is perfect, I can't improve it, there's nothing that can be done. If you say that, you will not do very well in this criteria because they want you to think critically and actually draw on some limitations that your essay may have had or some shortcomings, some issues you've had. If you can reflect on that, but also talk about the good stuff. But if you can reflect on the good and bad stuff, generally speaking, that is what they're after. And what is also very important is they want you to present an independent voice because, as you may recall, I don't want you regurgitating stuff from another website or a textbook or anything like that. I want you to be doing something brand new and innovative. So if you can present an independent voice, say, I tried X, Y, Z things, these things worked, these things didn't, I then decided to go with this route because X, Y, Z. If you can do that, that is showing an independent voice because it's showing you're actually thinking about things, you're considering approaches, and accordingly, that is sort of helping you sort of lay out how you want to approach everything and showing that you're thinking about it yourself. And it's an independent voice. If you can do all that, that is generally speaking what they're after. And yeah, so that concludes my coverage of the marking criteria. And I'll see you all in the next video.